In today's video, I have a painting tutorial for all of the miniatures in the core box of Alter Quest. Before we get into that, I just want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. For this month of November of 2020, we have three GGGGs. Every month, Bob the Beholder picks a Patreon supporter to receive a gratitude gift. And for this month, we have three items. So go ahead and check out that list. I have links in the descriptions below if you want to see what those gratitude gifts are. Today's video is going to be pretty long because I do go through the entire set. Now, I don't go step by step for every single one, but I establish sort of a foundation of how I use contrast colors in order to paint these miniatures, feel free to skip to a certain section, check out the timeline that's below if you want to do that. Also, if you haven't seen yet, go ahead and check out my video on the best undercoating for contrast colors. That's a two-part video series if you want to see what kind of undercoating you want to put on miniatures for contrast colors and washes. I also have a slew of other videos if you want to see of painting tutorials, comparisons between contrast colors and washes, and all that kinds of stuff. But this is my established method of speed painting. And you might complain about the fact that the miniatures aren't super high quality in terms of the paint job. But my argument is there's almost 200 miniatures for both the base box as well as the expansion box. And so I wanna get these done within two weeks time. So in order to get all of these miniatures finished before Thanksgiving, I need to have a very fast technique in order to get it done. And so my goal is to finish up all 200 miniatures by Thanksgiving so that I can play over Thanksgiving break. My philosophy is that a poorly painted miniature is better than just gray plastic. And so any kind of effort that you make into painting your miniatures, I think will be rewarding in the end. So let's go ahead and dive in. First thing I want to say is that these bases are actually not an inch wide. If you look here on this ruler, it is an eighth of an inch smaller in diameter. So these miniatures are actually fairly small in scale. The good news of that is that they're going to be a lot faster to paint since they are smaller. Not as small as Street Masters. Those minis are fairly small in scale. I mean look at these guys. These, these guys are pretty big. But overall I think these are going to go by faster than I was first anticipating because of the smaller size of the miniatures. And then you have to make a decision as you paint whether or not um, you want to just use these rings. Again, I thought these were going to be standard one inch rings, but they're not. Or whether or not you're going to paint the edge red, green, blue, and yellow. And then for the lurker, I guess it could be gray at the base. That's why you receive five of each of the enemy factions. Or I think I'm going to go the route where instead of painting the base the color, I think I'm going to incorporate the color actually in the armor or the clothes. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out because I don't think it will take that much longer to distinguish each one of the models based off of some of their armor or their clothes being a specific theme or color. I might be shooting myself in the foot because once I go down this road, I'm not going to change it. Uh, but when I was painting my Street Masters miniatures, I did notice that when I was painting the base, it did take quite a bit of time because I had to put, for example, um, to get a smooth coat, I had to put two or three coats of paint on there. And then to put the gray on top, again, I needed three coats of gray on top to cover over the white. So that was quite a bit of painting that I was devoting just to the base. So hopefully this method will make it easier and faster to be able to paint. I basically chose to do Zenithal highlighting with Montana Gold spray paint over black. And again, see that video to look at what the difference is when you use Zenithal highlighting undercoating. But if you don't use Zenithal, that's fine. Just spray paint all of these white. The process will be faster because you're skipping that step. Because of one of my viewers who mentioned if you put your spray cans in warm water before you spray, especially during cold weather, you're going to get a finer mist of spray and that definitely is the case. So check out this model here. You can tell a little bit more that the atomization of the spray paint particles is actually smaller because I did dunk it in warm water before I sprayed the white, the Montana Gold White over the black. So 
I think that was great advice. Um, let me see if you can see a little bit better here, but definitely the shading on this is better. And not again, not quite as good as airbrush quality, but definitely faster using that rattle can spray of white over the top. So this is my chosen method of undercoating because it is sort of the fastest and gives me the benefits of Zenithal highlighting without all of the work of using an airbrush. So let's go ahead and tackle and work on the four heroes that come in the base box. Again, this is the base box. And one of the first things that I do is just work on all of the skin tones all together. I'm gonna to use Gilliman Flesh for all of the flesh tones, possibly with the exception of Myrene because she's undead, she's super pale. So I'm, I will probably just use the flesh wash from Army Painter for her. It's right here because this is actually pretty light compared to Gilliman Flesh. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use silver. You can use any silver. I'm using Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal. And I probably could have primed her all silver since I am painting her all of her armor as an undercoat of silver. So it was probably a waste for me to do the Zenithal highlighting since her whole figure is going to be painted in this silver. There is some cloth here on the back that you don't have to paint silver, but pretty much everything else is. And then for the rest of the heroes, go ahead and paint any metal that might be silver, like Cedron's mace, and he has some armor as well. And then I'm not gonna show on the other miniatures, but basically any metal, usually weapons. I'm using Ultramarine's blue for dark blue on a couple of the heroes. The first one is with Rowan. He has a really small exposure of pants that is a dark blue. And then Quella, the outer part of her robe. And she does have trim along the edge. So be careful to leave that white. We're gonna come back with yellow to paint in that trim. Here's Cedron's card, so all of this is gonna be dark blue. I went ahead and put this piece of paper down so that it doesn't keep trying to focus on the background. But I'm gonna take some orc flesh for my green. And this is Rowan's shirt, which is super small. So I'm using a smaller brush for this. And then Quella's pants. So I am using Army Painter's Blue Tone for
for Sudren's lighter blue cloak. But if you don't have this wash, feel free to use Telesar Blue instead. Here's some contrast wildwood. I'm using a Kellyan green, but you can use um, Talisar blue if you want. And then Cola has some magic items that So you can choose either Blood Angels Red or Flesh Terrors Red. I'm going to use Flesh Terrors Red because it's a little bit of a darker red and we're gonna show Myrene some love. I'm using my smaller brush because there is a lot of trim that is going to be needed with the gold. So even though there's lots of area to cover, we're going to have to be careful not to get it on the areas that are gonna be gold. I'm using Iron in Yellow, and this is where I'm going to follow all of the silver trim. If you want more of a copper color, you can use Snakebite Leather instead of the yellow. But I like the brighter color of the yellow, it makes it look gold. And I know on the card, these spikes are also yellow, but I'm gonna keep them silver. I actually like it more silver. But you can be somewhat sloppy with the yellow because it's so light that even if you go onto the red, it won't cover up the red at all. And the red will still shine through towards the bottom of it. So you don't have to be as careful. That's why you want to be careful with the red because it adds a darker color. Wherever the red goes, you can't really paint over it with a lighter color like yellow. Now black will go over it and we're going to do black next. But first we're going to do all of the trim here. You also want to do Quella's trim. And I think I'm going to opt to do her um, the bottom part of her robe yellow as well. Just because I like it better than the tan. I 
I'm also going to do um, Sedran's book edges with yellow as well. Then maybe this pouch that's down here will also do yellow. Just to change up the color a little bit. Maybe the hilt of the sword I'll make yellow too. Now I'm grabbing black Templar. Well, that's what she looks like. She's mostly done. Actually, I think he has fingerless gloves. Because you can't really see his fingers here, I don't, I'm not gonna go back and repaint his flesh on his fingers there. Just leave it at that. So that, you know, it's small mistakes like that that you can just decide whether or not you wanna correct. And for the sake of speed, I am not going to correct. And some of these are just some random colors here in this backpack. And Sedrin just has some spots, some a few spots, just to color black. And you know what? I forgot to color that spot in there. Here we have snake bite leather. Do all of our chicken parts. and the hilt of a sword. Color this, not entirely sure what it is, but give it a little bit of color. Maybe it's a bowl. And then here on Myrene, I forgot to do the back of the shield, so I'm just gonna do it with this darker color. I could have done it with yellow, but since I don't wanna pull it out again, I'll just do it with this snake bite leather instead and that's fine because right now um, we're pretty much done but there's a couple of pieces that still need to be painted that I haven't done yet so I'm gonna make that red I'm also gonna do the trim down here of this portion of her I don't know what it is it's not really a cape but make this red as well just so that it doesn't look like it's unpainted. And this thing, oops, got it on there. Doesn't matter though, because you can't see it very well. I'm gonna make that red too, because I'm gonna keep her blouse white. Again, I don't wanna make it tan. So whatever this handkerchief, I, I don't know what it is, but I'll make it red just to have it stand out a little more. So normally with her and Rowan's uh, shirt where it's white, I would use the apothecary white, but because the surface area is so small, I don't think you would notice at all. So I'm just gonna leave it just this white without bothering to paint. And the Zenithal helps a little bit have some shading underneath. So otherwise you could use apothecary white just to have a subtle hint of shade. I think I'll just keep it this color. I'm gonna use some Militarum Green. Ron still has some tidbits back here that could use some color. So I'll go ahead and make that this olive green. Let's go ahead and do this green to her belt buckle. So there's only a couple of spots that need some washes and the first one I'm gonna use Seraphim Sepia or you can use Skeleton Horde. Either one. And it is on Quella's two scrolls here. It's giving it a beige tint. So it's super subtle, right? 
And then non-oil or dark tone. They both have the same effect, so you can pick either one. And this I'm going to apply on all of the metal, all of the silver that we painted before. It's gonna get a coat just to pull out the highlights. Now, you know, some people won't do the silver until after the varnish is sprayed on because the matte varnish will dull the shine on any metallics. But because I am speed painting, I don't really care about that. Whereas if I wasn't speed painting, I might actually come back after I spray with dull varnish. Uh, another coat of silver just to make it shiny again. But these miniatures are not, or at least I'm not spending the extra step to do that because again, I'm speed painting. I wanna get these to the table as quickly as possible. But that is an option if you guys wanna do that. Cedron is pretty much done. That's what he looks like. And Rowan is just his dagger. And then this cup that I did go ahead and paint silver. And he is done as well. And then Myrene has her sword. And these spikes. Again, I don't know if you can even tell, but she too is done. Quella, she's pretty much done as well. Although, you know what? I did paint over her ears, so I think I'm gonna grab a dab of flesh and repaint her ears, otherwise she's done too. And for the heroes, I'm gonna paint their bases black and all the other minions, I'm gonna go ahead and paint their base with this zinc gray. Because I use these colors so often, I actually use craft paint rather than the more expensive dedicated um, miniature paints. So whites and grays and blacks, I just use uh, craft paint for that because it's so much cheaper and I use so much of it. But of course, you can Always use miniature paints for these and you can always choose what color you want your bases to be. I thought about, you know, having fancier bases where I put on some terrain and some tufts, but I decided against it because these bases are so small, not even an inch big. So I'm just gonna color them and be done with it. And typically these will need two coats, including gray when the base coat is white. You just need that extra coverage. So two coats should do well. So I will do this for all of the other heroes as well. And this is just a way to distinguish the heroes versus all of the minions and bad guys. So here they are finished. I think they turned out really good. So for one coat of paint on them, I think they look good. And because they're so small, I don't feel obligated to put any more work on them. And for tabletop quality, I think this is good. On the screen, you're gonna see more detail than you would on the tabletop because uh, these are so close up, but look how, look how small these guys are basically as miniatures. They're, they're pretty small. Again, compare that to the Forbidden Fortress miniatures. This might be easier to see somewhat the difference in scale. So for the rest of the miniatures, I am um, not going to go as in detail and might not even narrate necessarily. 
but I'm going to tackle now the minions and the first two I'm going to do is the feral mother and the crimson courtier and I'm, as always I start with the skin I'm going to do flesh wash for the feral mothers and probably gillum and flesh for the courtiers so I'll go ahead and do that real quick and these are going to be easier because we're batch painting Obviously you can pick the contrast color, so Talisar Blue here, or what I'm going to be using is Blue Tone from Army Painter Wash because the Talisar Blue is a little bit bright. So let me show you the comparison between the two. So this here to the left is the Blue Tone from Army Painter. Uh, this is the Ultramarine Blue, so there's a difference there. And then here is the Talisar Blue, which is pretty bright. And then this is the Akelian Green. So I have these sample models just so that I can see what they look like. And because I think this is a little bit too bright, I am going to go with the blue tone. But obviously you can choose whatever you want. And this is going to be true for all the other primary colors. Uh, you can use the contrast color version of it. And some of them I'll choose and it's totally based on just what your personal preferences are. So this is how I'm opting to color the various minions rather than coloring the base or using these rings. I'm going to just uh, color each one the basic blue, yellow, green, and red. And then the ones for lurkers, I'll try to stick as close as I can to the original colors. Although I don't want to color the feral mother green because I already have the green version there. So I might pick purple or one of the other colors that isn't shown here. But um, for the crimson courtier, it's easier because obviously he's all black. So you can tell the difference. Honestly, it probably isn't a big deal to use one of the colored ones as the lurker. Uh, but, you know, you guys can choose what, you, what kind of system you want to use to colorize each one of the minions.
Next we can use either Seraphim Sepia or Skeleton Horde. Again, these are gonna be the same effect. And this is primarily for this cluster of skulls that the Bogmancers have up here. Also, we are going to put Seraphim Sepia or Skeleton Horde on these bird skeletons or bird skulls that are on these blades for the raiders. And then there's also a rag that's right on the edge of the blade. All right, so let's check these out so far now uh, that these frocks are completed. And I think I like how the colors came out on these guys because they're pretty distinguishable from each other based off of their colors. And I did use Talisar Blue here, so obviously it's a lot brighter than using the blue wash from Army Painter. So really you can choose what type of blue you want to use, but I wanted some toned down blue. Uh, I use this Army Painter wash rather than Talisar blue that's found on this guy. Bulks looks pretty good, although you know what, I have no idea what that is. Is that actually a seat or is it a treasure chest? I don't know, so I just randomly colored it and I chose to do his loincloth red instead of the brown that's on his card but pretty happy with this Grabbing my silver. On these burners, I mistakenly thought that these were toes down here, but I think it's actually in retrospect metal. So I need to go over it with silver. And I know in the picture there is wood with silver trim, but the I'm just gonna paint all of the armor just silver rather than inlaying it with wood.
And these guys actually took longer to paint because they just had more parts, especially this little bomb thrower. He, um, there's a lot going on with him. So he took a while to paint, but again, that wash, that non oil or dark tone on the silver just really provides a lot of depth. So and then this guy looks good too. Now these are all bent, so I'm, I'm going to do the hot water method to bend them down. I probably should have done that before I painted, but you know what? I haven't seen a big difference from doing it after I paint because I'm going to spray matte varnish on these guys and that typically protects the paint but pretty happy with how these guys turned out too these bosses look all right anything that's going to be stoned primarily i spray prime with this rust-oleum two times ultra cover ultra matte slate and it's basically a really dark gray so as you can see here uh, all of this is stone and this is a nice dark gray and as well these doors I know these doors are going to be brown but the I decide by what's predominant here it's the stone that's predominant so I spray paint this gray and obviously these gargoyles are the same gray as well this is relatively cheap and I can buy this for about four dollars but if you can't find this another alternative here in the United States is Krylon Chalky Finish Anvil Gray and this is also a dark gray so if you can find any super dark gray that's not black that will work good as a first coat on the stone and then for anything that's going to be wood like this I use a really dark brown and this is Rust-Oleum Camouflage um, I don't remember what the name of this color is but it's basically the darkest brown you can get the reason why I like these rattle cans is because they are flat so this is pretty matte this looks a little bit shiny because I just spray a lot on there so inevitably inevitably it gets a little shiny but that shine will go away once you spray the matte varnish on them as well as when you get the craft paint to go on there so the undercoating makes this uh, really easy and then for this mirror I just spray painted gold I just had gold color so you can choose to do that or not but all of those things just makes it a lot easier to do so the first step we're going to do is use this zinc craft paint to basically do the floors of the the mushrooms as well as the weapons rack because the floor is basically stone so we're just going to just use a regular brush and color in all of the gray rather than keeping it brown and as you can see here I, I don't care if I'm covering over the weapons or whatnot because we've got to paint them in anyway but my brush is slightly dry so that some of the brown is remaining and the reason why I do that is because it provides a little bit of variety and shading in the ground by keeping the brown in there because floors aren't just one color typically you got dirt and grime that's in there and by keeping the brown sort of seeing a little bit of it at least in some of the cracks just gives that sense of dirt and a little bit more color variety for the most part I'm covering most of it with this gray this dark gray and the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be highlighting the other stone pieces and so I want to get this base gray down for the floor since I'll be using the same highlighting and dry brushing with the lighter uh, gray color on these as well. So this is just super quick. Again, don't have to be really anal about it. Just get this layer down and that's pretty much what it looks like. 
Uh, same thing with these mushrooms. Just get the floors down there. And again, I'm sloppy with it intentionally. And the next step is to actually grab some of this zinc. So stick with the zinc and then a medium gray, which for me is slate gray. So I actually mix these about half and half to get a uh, color that's in between these two. And that's gonna be my first highlight color or dry brush color. And eventually we'll slowly move to this as my last highlight. And I use a stiff brush like this, pretty big. And usually for terrain, this is the kind of brush that I use. But if you don't have a horsehair brush, don't worry about it. Just use a large brush. And the stiffer the hairs, uh, the better it might be. If you don't have stiff hair brush, just make sure that your brush is super dry. And so here's about a medium gray in between the two colors. And I wipe it off, just make sure I don't have too much on there. And it'll be easier to see on here. So just slowly do some dry brushing across all the stone. I probably have a little bit too much paint on my brush right now. I wanna, and, and at this phase you do want to get a lot of it in the cracks and crevices. So I am pushing it quite a bit to unload uh, more paint than I normally would with a regular dry brush. Because we're gonna come back and do another coat, again, like I said, without mixing using the slate gray. So it's gonna go one shade lighter than this. So this coat you wanna get in uh, pretty well. Again, you don't want it, you're not completely covering the thing up. You're just doing dry, uh, some dry brushing, but pushing it in more so than the final coat. So this is, this is what you're aiming for. That's a good stone effect. And I, let me show you with the gargoyle what we're, what we're uh, aiming for here. So pretty easy, you're just dry brushing like this. Oops, sorry. The inside of the wings as well. And this pedestal. See how I'm stabbing down in there a little bit like this so that I get good coverage. And that's, that's how you get a pretty nice stone effect. And then once you run out of paint, go ahead and just grab some more. You might need to mix some more up here. I need to grab more slate gray. And then let me show you how to do the door. Again, I don't, I don't care if I get the door itself because we're gonna go back and put brown on there when we do the browns. And this gray is probably a little bit too light, but this will just show you what we're aiming for. And that's why that's why this is so quick. A lot quicker than if I would have used contrast colors. Because you could use the gray. Uh, the I have the basilicanum gray here. And you could use this if this was spray painted white, but uh, I think this actually is a lot faster using this method. So that's pretty much what you're aiming for there. So do all the stone and, and even here, let me show you real quick. I'm gonna need a smaller brush for to get in between the mushrooms, but you know, 
just real quickly just putting some highlights in there like that and you don't have to do a whole lot and like I said before don't worry about getting it onto the brown because we're gonna go back and paint over that a little bit with with the dark brown so you're just getting the floor like that so that's what you're aiming for okay so now we are going to go ahead and just use exclusively slate gray without mixing it up I do have lighter grays than this but I, f I feel like if you go too light with the final highlighting that it just um, makes the contrast too high so I think and and especially with this final coat you want your brush to be fairly dry because you're only doing very light highlighting so whereas before we were really pushing it in here in this case you're just very lightly dragging it and hitting only a couple of the spots so this is again don't need a whole lot on your brush and it, it's a little bit hard to tell I think on the video but it is lightening it up so let, let's see if you can really tell by these being side by side it's really hard to tell but you do just make it a little bit lighter with this final coat and let me go ahead and do a gargoyle maybe you, it'll show up a little bit better on that And one of the things to take into consideration too is when you dry brush a lot, it will become darker when you spray the final protective varnish on there. So just keep that in mind that you might feel like, oh man, I'm ruining it because it's too light. But know that it will be muted somewhat when you spray the varnish on here, the protective one. So that's what I keep in mind, but This time I'm not doing nearly as much, so it's just hitting some highlights. So let's compare. See if you can tell that the one on the right is lighter than the one on the left. But again, not by a whole lot. So that's what you're aiming for. Just um, lightening it up just a little bit with that final dusting. And this is, th this is it, I mean, for the gargoyle. I will be coloring the wings uh, so that you can distinguish them. But typically with gargoyles, I would just leave it at this because they're supposed to be stone. But because of the game, I will want to color the wings so that I can distinguish them from one another. Okay, so for colorizing the gargoyles, I'm just using regular paints, not the contrast colors or washes. So I have Army Painter as well as Reaper. So you can pick whichever you want. Um, for pe If you don't have paints yet, I always suggest to people buy army painter because you can buy these big boxes of them for cheap so and uh, they're pretty watery and forgiving um, reaper there I, I actually prefer sort of the um, formula of reaper but it's a little bit trickier to work with and uh, the stopper bottle always gets clogged so I I think army painter is the way to go for beginner painters but either one, it doesn't matter. Um, you're just using regular paint. So what I'm gonna do is um, just grab one of these and uh, I'm just gonna color the inside of the wings. And it doesn't have to be perfect or, you know, uh, even though the gray sh comes through, it really doesn't matter. You're just putting on enough paint so that you know that this is the green minion. That's really all that matters. Now the yellow, because yellow is not very opaque, um, I will have to put probably white down before I put the yellow down. But all the other colors should be opaque enough that you can put a layer down just like I'm doing here. Um, and as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be super thick, it's just indicating and in fact you don't want it to be too colorful because again gargoyles are supposed to be stone so the because of that you don't want to color it too strongly and and that's pretty this is pretty much it 
Uh, you could do the inside if you wanted to. I'm not gonna do that because it's hard to see, especially when it's sitting on the table. And this is good enough for me. Oh, let me go ahead and dot the eyes here. Like that. And pretty much he's done. So I'm gonna do all the other colors as well. All right, so th this is how they came out. Pretty simple, again, really quick. And then with the yellow, um, I actually didn't use white, I used a super light gray instead. But to, in order to get the yellow to show up, uh, you do need to put a lighter coat underneath. The red, I didn't have to. Sometimes you do with the red, but because I didn't mind the muted colors, it turned out fine. Here's the blue, here's the green one that you saw before. And then this is the lurker, which I just kept gray. So very simple. So with these mushrooms, I'm just putting on a coat of light gray just so that the color will go on them more easily, just like I did with the yellow on the gargoyle. This just brightens it up and gives a lighter undercoat. And as you can see here, I'm not completely covering it up. I want some of the brown to highlight the these bumps. So again, I'm not being super careful, but just slapping some paint on just to create an undercoat. So with that, I can put you know the reds and the blues, purples, all that kind of stuff on there. I'll probably do a light tan for the stalks as well, but I'm not gonna show that. All right, finishing these mushrooms up with just some white on these bumps. So if you can't tell, I am all about doing the painting as quickly as possible. I am not a perfectionist, I am not worried about making sure that everything is shaded. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you want to spend the time to do all this uh, paint with a lot more detail, feel free to do that. But as I mentioned before, I have tons of miniatures and I would rather play with poorly painted miniatures, which I don't think these are poorly painted, but I would rather play with poorly painted miniatures than just gray plastic any day. So even throwing one or two colors onto a miniature is enough for me. Because there's just too many games. There's just too many miniatures to keep track of. So I had to learn to let go and be okay with not every miniature being a masterpiece. And in fact, there's a lot of miniatures that afterwards I really don't like how the paint turned out. But I always say, well, there's always another miniature to paint so I can do better next time. So this is pretty much it. I mean, that, that's all you need to do for the mushrooms. So now we're gonna do the wood of these door frames. And to do that, I have burnt umber. Apple barrel super cheap. It's like 60 cents, 70 cents for a bottle of this. Um, but you can use any dark uh, brown that you have. And again, I always use craft paints for my terrain because I just have a lot. I usually use a lot of paint when I'm painting terrain. And so I don't wanna use expensive paints to do that. You can. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is just one of the ways. You know, I, I started painting miniatures with just craft paints. And for probably for 10 years, I just used regular craft paints. And I finally purchased some Reaper miniature paints. And definitely you can tell the difference in terms of the number of uh, paint particles that are in the solution. So craft paints just tend to be have less coverage because it just has less pigment in the um, solution. But with things like this, I don't really care 
because you, you're not looking at it with the same level of detail. And in fact, you know, for a long time, um, it works perfectly fine for miniature. So if you've never actually painted miniatures before and you're just thinking about it and Alter Quest might be your first try at it, I always do say, look, don't invest hundreds of dollars on all this painting supplies. Just buy, you know, just a couple of bottles because they're under a dollar, like I mentioned before, of craft paint and start painting and see if you like it because there's plenty of people who go out and buy these expensive sets of paint, miniature paint, and then they don't end up sticking with it. So, and contrast colors are expensive. So that, that's a big investment that you're making, not knowing whether or not you're really going to enjoy painting miniatures. So that's just my suggestion. But this is all we're doing because we're gonna come back and do black on all of the metal parts. While we're waiting for the doors to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of blue in this altar. And because it's water, it doesn't have to be 100% smooth. It can be wavy like this. The trick though is making sure that it's straight along the edge. So you can opt to dry brush your doors with silver if you want to. Now, I'm not gonna do this with my doors because, again, I wanna do it as fast as I can and I think the black looks fine on them. But I'll go ahead and do it on one door and then just repaint it black just to show you what it'll look like if you wanna go this route. Because I am using my 3D printed board with doors. Uh, I don't want to invest a ton of time on these, but this is what you can do basically, is just dry brush the silver or just hit these uh, raised parts, these rivets with it. And the door handle like this and the edge. So you can just, again, just really lightly do some dry brushing over it like so. And that'll, that'll just highlight the black a little bit more. And this is definitely an option that I would probably do if I was intent on 
using these doors, you know, exclusively, and if I didn't have my own board and terrain. But, you know, it just gives it that extra highlighting that um, you don't quite get with just plain black. But again, I'm just keeping mine black. And then you will want to do this with the weapons rack as well, just highlighting some of the metal parts, these axes and weapons, after um, putting a base of black on them. Again, with train, you know, I don't, I don't spend a ton of time um, because really the miniatures are the centerpieces, so terrain is not as important to be detailed, I don't think. I decided to add a little bit of color to this because it was so plain with it being all gray. So just lining these cracks with some color, I think, adds just enough of a touch that keeps it from being boring. Also on some of it, I'm not exactly following the cracks because there isn't a crack right here, but uh, otherwise it doesn't seem like there's enough color, especially here in the front. If you follow the crack, it's just these two lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick one over here like this, just to uh, give more color. So that just gives it that extra little touch of color, which I think it needs. So for the mirror, you know, I did spray paint it gold and then I painted the base gray, but um, I am gonna use this reflective tape and I actually uh, use this for duct work. So I don't, I got this at Home Depot. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it has really a uh, reflective surface here. So I'm gonna cut off a piece and stick it on here as the mirror rather than painting it silver because uh, I just like the effect a little bit more. But if you can't get a hold of this material, then just um, paint, you can paint this silver or what have you. reflective surface. You could put a wash, usually with my gold, I do a wash of seraphim sepia, but because the details are already in it and it's such a smaller piece, I don't bother doing the wash and this is pretty much done. The other furniture pieces, I just did random colors and didn't even bother um, doing dry brushing with them, but just did solid, solid colors, again, because it's relatively small pieces. I am going to go ahead and put matte varnish on this and then go back with some gold for some of these parts. Again, it's sort of random um, and you can choose to do whatever you want, but uh, the furniture is pretty much done. Uh, the chest as well, um, I'm waiting until I varnish it before I do the trim in gold. So that's what I'm going to go do now is spray all of these pieces because they are, I have all the furniture pieces done. I have all of the base set miniatures done. So I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and spray varnish it. So this is my new favorite matte varnish. It is Rust-Oleum's Dead Flat. This is a little bit hard to find, but this is both more matte and less expensive than my previous go-to, which was Tester's Dull Coat. For whatever reason, um, they changed the formula on that, so it isn't as mad as it used to be. So this is my new favorite one. I bought this at Menard, so check out your local hardware store for this brand, but it might be a little bit hard to find. I'll provide an Amazon link, but typically they are more expensive on Amazon. So if you can find this locally, I think I paid maybe six or seven dollars for this. So this is definitely my favorite. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the gold. And I let some of the brown show through underneath. I'm not anal about getting it completely. And if you notice here, I leave spots like 
where this band meets up with this one, I leave it dark there just so that there's a line that demarcates those two spots. So that just provides some natural shading without needing to go back and do a wash or anything like that. So that just makes it look like there's some shading down here and up here. And we're gonna go ahead and just do this balance over here in gold. And obviously you can do this stuff in silver if you want or just about any other color in black would look good too. But this is just to break up the colors a little bit. Go ahead and do this. That actually looks like a dice cup. And here I'm just grabbing some super gloss Mod Podge. And I found this to actually be the most glossy and shiny out of all of the different options you can use nail polish and all that other kinds of stuff but I actually found that this works the best in creating a really shiny surface so I'll go ahead and just spread this liberally all over this fountain and typically this dries really really shiny so that is the finishing touches for the base set so there you go. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to do a painting tutorial video for the expansions and stretch goals. I actually don't have Ark Inspire expansion nor the four original heroes, but there are more than double the number of miniatures that is found in the stretch goals box. Maybe if there's enough of you that show interest, I might just do a walkthrough in terms of pointing out what paints I used for each of the miniatures rather than doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial like I did for this one. So go ahead and make comments in the section below if that's something that you want. I also will be showcasing my 3D Ultra Quest board that I made with Dragon's Rest tiles. So please subscribe to my channel so that you're alerted of when that video comes out. But thanks so much for watching. Happy painting, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.